Welcome back everyone, Conius here. Today we're flying from Yuma, Arizona to Phoenix. I've made a couple of changes. I have a different co-pilot. Uh, the livery on the aircraft has changed. I think I have a better microphone set up. We'll see if that works. Let's go outside and take a look at the livery. It looks like it's a civil air patrol design. So I thought that might look pretty interesting to fly with. Looks like it is a beautiful day here in Yuma. So let's go ahead and get started. I've already set up the autopilot for a flight level of 5,500 feet and we are cleared for takeoff. Let's climb long enough with the flaps to make sure that we clear the runway, and then I'll put the flaps up. KH279er, continue for east departure. I will contact you next when you leave my airspace. Yuma Tower, KH279er, continue for east departure. I've also turned on engine and plane stress damage, so I'm going to have to keep a better eye on not maxing out the throttle. Alright, so I'm going to get us on course and then hand off to the autopilot. Climbing a little fast there. quite on course. I've learned it's better to turn over to the autopilot when it doesn't have to do a bunch of course adjustment. Alright, let's engage. Okay. So a little bit of course adjustment. Sometimes it wobbles back and forth and doesn't uh, doesn't quickly center in on the heading, so I'll keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on throttle speed. Once we level off at 5,500 feet, I will go outside and start looking around. KH279R, you are leaving my airspace. Frequency change approved. All right, so we're doing a little bit of that serpentine. I don't know if that's normal, maybe more realistic. There's a delay in actuating parts of the plane, and so... So anyway, any kind of a feedback loop is going to be affected by those delays in moving the, you know, control surfaces around. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and engage flight level change now that we've centered on our heading. Give so just a little bit more thrust. But I think we're I think we're doing okay. I might actually need to set this target speed down. Let's try that. Okay, there. There we go. Well, 
like I said, it looks like it's a beautiful clear day. See a lot of agricultural land out there. attention to this dial because what I notice is I'll floor the throttle and then this will start blinking it gets into this red zone and so I'm going to try to avoid that since I have engine stress turned on. Um, there we go, leveling off. The particular thing it's measuring, let's see what is that, it's torque. Okay, so we're over torquing the engine basically when I do that. Alright, so we're essentially leveling off. I'm going to pull back on the throttle. We don't need to go quite so fast. And let's go outside and take a look. Here's that new livery again. RTX 2080 Ti, I've got my graphic settings pretty much all maxed out, overclocked. Does a really good job on 4K as well, although I don't have a way to record that with reliable audio yet. So I'm stuck on full high def. But at this point, Autopilot has the plane under control. I have to just keep an eye on engine speed, airspeed, basically. And otherwise, we are free to look around. These mountains coming up here look really interesting. Ones. The ones actually forward of us, but I did want to look down and see what this all looked like. Getting a little up there in speed, so I'm going to pull back just a bit on the throttle. So today we are playing the role of the Civil Air Patrol. I'm not sure exactly what they do these days. Modeling is pretty good on that stuff, it's not just a photograph or texture. of interesting, not that high up mountain ranges. I'm not that familiar with this area. I've been in Arizona a couple of times. The rendering detail looks really good. So when I started on this journey, on my essentially learning to fly tour, I was running on an HP Envy that had a mobile GPU in it that I overclocked. I got kind of okay performance out of it, but things just looked awful. So it's so nice to see things looking almost like, you know, photorealistic video. I'm 
going to switch to a drone. Um, let's see. I want to make sure... I always hit the wrong one there. I want to make sure that it's going to rotate around the plane, which would be lock mode. And let's cut the speed a bit. I can go in closer and change altitude in this mode. Yep, there we go. Well, it's a little fast. Let's slow that down. To in the orientation on the control. Oh, you know what? The orientation is changing because of that locking I did. So let me turn. still going forward with the plane, but now I can go freely on the ground so you can see the pilot and co-pilot there. Co-pilot is all official in uniform. I took the uniform off the pilot because I figured it's, he's a civilian learning to fly, not a, not an actual pilot. Um, so, that's kind of cool. Actually, disconnect from the plane and come down here and look around. Um, when exploring, though, it is a good idea to set the drone speed up to max. Okay, so let's see how far down can I get here. Oh, yeah, I can get quite far. If we look at the plane, there it is up there. You can just sort of barely see it. And then we're just kind of tailing along here on the ground. I'm really glad they added this capability. It makes it really fun to explore the whole planet. Uh, <coughs> anybody who doesn't even ha have a desire to fly can move the drone around like a video game and look at whatever they want. I'm not sure where the plane is. It's up there somewhere. I'm going to go ahead and reset. Go back inside, or go back outside. Okay, I just need to keep an eye on airspeed. Just a little quieter indoors. If you pull back and go up, you get a really nice view, and you can still see all the instruments just fine. Um, throttle speed's good. You have approached KH 279er. Request clearance to transition Bravo airspace. <laughs> they sound like sisters. Cleared through Bravo airspace, KH 279er. I should see if I can install some more language packs, get some more voices, that would be kind of nice. Sounds like they're a little lacking, or at least my machine's a little lacking in female voices. for KH 279er. Albuquerque Center, KH 279er, 5,500 feet. KH 279er, 
Albuquerque Center, continue as planned. Altimeter, 29 decimal, 80. It's fun to look out the window, it feels like you're in a real plane. They used to have some preset external views and then they stopped working after a patch, so... But what was nice is you could go easily sit on in a seat in the back looking over the wing like a passenger. It was a nice view. Right, if I sw swing this a little bit, I can probably keep an eye on the short panel. mouse wheel will zoom in, um, which is a nice feature, although they don't necessarily render stuff in the distance at any higher resolution, so you don't get a whole lot more detail, but at least it makes things a little clearer. So, cruising along comfortably, around 140 knots, 5,500 feet. When we get a little closer, I'll start descending. Let's go outside again. sure I'm really happy about this livery. It looks okay. I didn't really like any of the other ones. A couple of them are corporate logos. I don't know if it's okay to put DHL and FedEx. It probably is. I might try one of those just for fun. Um, I would like to find some more liveries though. It was easy enough to just unzip and drop into the community folder and then it'll show up in the game if you restart. description to the livery pack I am using. I think I put a link in the last video as well. Um, it's got, I don't know, a couple of hundred liveries across many different airplanes, especially the ones I like to fly. Xbox controller 
an external view, you have to resist the temptation to hit the left stick because that will change the, uh, that works like your flight stick, so you have to be careful about that. I almost started twiddling it and then I realized that only works in drone mode. that down there was a landing strip for a minute, but I don't think, I don't think so. I think it was a dirt pile or something. Of course, not going to see any stars this time of day, probably. Alright, let me get it over to the menu, and that'll make this look a lot nicer. <laughs> look like phonograph records or something. I mean, I think they really literally are crop circles. I think what we're looking at here is just satellite photographs from space, but it's fun to see in context. Um, get a more of an overview here. Yeah, it just looks like a bunch of disks, almost like a bunch of coins or something. Very interesting. Okay, that looks like it might be a solar panel farm. <laughs> Alright, I think I can switch back to the internal view, or the external view temporarily. Check out the throttle, that it looks fine. Okay, back to the drone. Cool. Yeah, it looks like it's definitely solar power. Looks so, almost like a little mini volcano over here, although I'm sure that's not what it actually is.
get an idea of, of perspective looking at the roads down here. So that's just kind of a dirt pile or something. Um, thought that was solar power, but I think that's something else. Alright, I'm going to reset back to the plane. Feels a, feels a little weird being away from it for so long, but we're doing fine. I can always have the co-pilot take over if I need to. So we have a ways to go still, uh, almost 80 miles. Going at 140. I'm going to increase the throttle a bit. See if I can get us there just a bit faster. The danger zone is really once you get up above 170 or above. So we should be fine to go fast. I just have to burn that speed off before I attempt to land. Something I often have a little trouble doing. But I think this speed is fine. We're not going to stress out the plane or the engine. I don't know if there's a way to go any faster without changing altitude. And throttle, of course. All right, let's go back inside. We can keep an eye on airspeed from in here. this interesting view.
Alright, let's go back outside. Still 64 miles to go. More really interesting looking mountain ranges. I see some water over there too, which I'd like to check out. Still not super happy about the livery, but it does look official. It's better than just a plain old nothing. In the last video I had a cute one nature error with a bunch of cartoon animals on it. There's the water I was talking about just over the left wing. Not sure what body of water that is. I'm going to drop the throttle a little bit for a safety margin. And then we can use the drone to go over there and look at that. I will need to set the speed again. It would be nice if it remembered the speed from the last time. Alright, let's go over and see what this is all about. Interesting, some nice reflections of the water. Uh, this could look really pretty at sunset, at the right angles. Or with a full moon at night. I wonder if we can spot the plane. Probably not, it's probably too small. If it was nighttime, we'd see the strobe, but I don't see anything. But I can hit 5 on the numpad, and back we go. There's our external view. Seeing the plane jump reminded me to hit B to adjust the barometer. I used to have the uh, notifications show up on the screen to tell me to do that kind of stuff, but I'm trying to wean myself off of assists. Looks again like we're coming up on another mini volcano, but I'm sure that's not what that actually is. It's just erosion at the top it makes it look like that, I'm guessing. The views are, are really nice, especially with the, the really nice graphics card. I hear there's a USA update coming, so I'm expecting things to get even better. You know, in my in my neighborhood, they're using something like 10-year-old satellite data. It shows the main highway still being under construction. Some other things not quite right, so I'm hoping over time they will get more up-to-date data. back inside and let's just drop down 
in altitude a bit to get ready for our eventual approach. So 55 was the old target, we'll set 4000 as the new target. Up the throttle and let it make up the slack by descending. I'm trying to do these things, I'm trying to do these things more smoothly than I have. Not just drop the throttle suddenly down. It does seem to make a difference. That's a little low on the throttle, so I'm going to bring it back up. And I'm watching this dial here. We'll begin to slow down when we get to the target descent altitude. So at that point I'll bring it up on the throttle again. Looks like we're starting to level off. I'm going to increase the throttle a bit. Air's getting a little bit bumpy, but that's fine. Let's go back outside and just see what things look like from here. It's probably ground effects of the wind and the mountain ranges, I'm guessing. But that is a complete guess because I don't know this stuff. What's this over here? Compressor or something? Gila Compressor Station. Interesting. I'm guessing it's their manufacturing plant for airline equipment or aircraft equipment. So they've got their own language there. these agricultural plots over here on the left. That's a nice view with all the little mini mountain ranges. about 2,000 once we Look actually approach, get KH to the airport. Two seven nine or four thousand feet. The first few times I did this, it was a little scary handing it off to autopilot, but um, it seems to know what it's doing, and also it's just a game, so you're not going to die. There's some kind of a warning here, I'm not sure what that is. No wind data, okay. Interesting. KH279, contact Phoenix Approach on ONE20.7. Oh cool, we're contacting Phoenix Approach finally, we're leveling off. One two zero decimal seven KH two seven nine er. Phoenix approach KH two seven nine er three thousand three hundred feet. KH two seven nine er Phoenix approach continuous plan. Altimeter two nine er decimal eight one. I just really like these mountain ranges. I think they'd look really cool to fly low altitude at. 
during a smoky sunset, reddish smoky sunset. I think that'd be really pretty. Trying to get better at nice smooth camera movements. So I'm gradually letting our speed drop so that we can burn off some of that velocity before we have to slowly land at the runway. Cars on the freeway down there. We still have a ways to go. The co pilot will contact them around ten miles away. makes me kind of seasick or something. So. I've really gotten to like this plane. I moved up to the 208 from the 172. It feels really smooth, it's nice and powerful. I am thinking of changing up again sometime soon. I'll have to start looking at which aircraft that'll be, probably one of the higher up Cessnas. But I've been liking this one a lot. It's easy to fly. It seems very reliable. That view, that seems very cinematic. I think I've addressed the clicks and pops situation while talking. I've got, uh, well, I don't know what they call it, dead cat. It's a little tiny one, so I call it a dead kitten on my microphone. It seems to have done the job. We're going to be fine going over that mountain range. We can check the Garmin and look for the white line. I think we're going to be fine. I'm not sure it's kind of showing any of that stuff yet. Yep, we're fine. It would be fun if they had some AI passengers you could invite on board just to have you know folks on board. It might actually raise the stakes, make you take the flying a little bit more seriously or something. That would be kind of fun. Or even run a little delivery service or a little mini airline. That would be a lot of fun. But if I feel like the game is going to be so interesting for so long to come just because of all the places you can fly off to and explore. Places I'll never go to.
I'm not sure if you could actually stand up this high. I think you can probably stick your neck up a little bit, but probably not this high when you're flying, unless you take your belt off. Okay, I like to see another bit of water over there, but that looks like it's a manufacturing thing, maybe an evaporation pond or something. some interesting buildings up here on the right, or on well, our plane's left, the screen right. Hmm. Not sure what that is. Maybe an athletic center? That's kind of what it looks like. take the time to learn more about what all these things mean. Um, the documentation is all available online, I just need to go take the time to read it. You know, most of this is nav and audio stuff. Let's see here, fuel, prop RPM, oil pressure, internal temperature or something. I don't know to what extent how you know how real these are. For instance, can I swap the map on one and the navigational or the you know, instruments on the other? Didn't find a way to do that the last time I tried. Um, but it'd be fun to poke around in the menus and see what you can do. At some point, I want to actually start the plane in parking and set the whole plan up from within the plane not using the game menu. Okay, I see we're getting close to these mountains, but I think we're fine. Uh, I think they would look a lot bigger if we were going to hit them. So I'm not going to worry about it. It just looks so realistic out the window here. With the haze and everything. playing against a wall with a laser projector at 120 inches across, so I've got a nice, easy to view image. There's probably some lag. I don't know if this would be a good setup for a high-speed shooter or something, but for this, this is fine. Another interesting structure over here. I'd like to see what that's all about. Maybe a racetrack? Yeah, it looks like a racetrack. And then maybe some more industrial water related stuff over there. Alright, now's the time to drop down to 2000. So let's go ahead and do that. We're approaching the time when it will begin entering the landing pattern. just can't get over how realistic it looks. The anti-aliasing is especially good. I have it set on the maximum setting. I 
it seems like at full high def you need that and things just look nice and you know, separated from each other without the jaggies. At 4K it's not as important I think because the jags are so small you're not going to see them anyway so I don't think you'd need the same level of anti-aliasing at 4K so you can dial that down. That's my theory. I'm going to see if I can prove that. Alright, we're starting to level off. Uh, we're going to slow down. That is perfectly okay. I want to get our speed down to, uh, well, into flap range. Which is that white line on the speed ticker tape. Go ahead and put the flaps down. Just always a little dicey because it wants to suddenly climb. Alright, and I am going to disengage autopilot. And we need some thrust now. And we're set sure where the entrance to the landing pattern is going to be. It'd be nice if it was head-on, but usually it's not. They optimize it, I guess, for local conditions. We can go a little faster than this. We could have a safety margin in speed anyway. I'm guessing it's going to want us to go below 80 once we get there. Phoenix Tower KH 279er is 11 miles west with Gulf to land. American ONE 218 turn next taxiway. Sisters again. Oh, there's the pattern. Okay. American Alright, so I'm gonna need to turn over there. engine stress turned on, so I really do actually have to watch that. So I kind of have to guess where the landing pattern is. I could drop in altitude a bit, maybe see over the dashboard. Okay, there it is. The landing guide is still red, it should go blue when we're going at an acceptable speed, but we're obviously not. But there will be plenty of time to slow down. Um, it can be hard to judge the shape of the tube. I think maybe the entrance is right here. Some of that off. Uh, do you need 
need to turn and see if I can judge. Okay, yeah, this is the right entrance. Phoenix looks beautiful. I think maybe after this flight I'll do a city fly around. Seems like a great place to look around. The Icon A5 would be good for something like that. Although I don't think there's any water to land in. Okay, this is a nice straight on landing pattern. Very nice. We're still going too fast. I'm going to drop throttle. Clear to land runway 8KH279R. Once I know where the plane is relative to the tube, then I can figure out when it's safe to drop the throttle based on how much extra altitude I have that could be turned into you know, airspeed. some of this excess speed. Runway is in sight. Everything looks clear. I need to get below 75, so I'll just keep finding that balance between stalling and going slow. And so far we look like we're good. I think we can just ride this slope down, have a nice smooth landing, that's my theory. I can afford to dip and get a little bit more airspeed. Get a little closer to the ground at the same time. I've been having a problem of hitting the runway too early, so I'm trying to you know, not let off the throttle too soon. I'd really like to feel a little bit more in control of exactly when the wheels touch down. Okay, but at this point we do need to drop throttle get below that white line about the time that the wheels hit, and so it seems like we're on a good approach. I'm going to try to level off and float, float over the runway. I do need to get better at making this smooth, but my main goal right now is to not damage the plane. I suppose if I had Passengers, okay, a little bouncy, that's fine. You know, if you had passengers, that could be another um, thing where they would. I always forget to put the flaps up as soon as I land. Anyway, that they could rate you poorly or something on your, you know, comfortability as a pilot. Okay, we're gonna exit right here. Alright, that's kind of what we did. Alright, so that's my role to do. One tree, two decimal five five for KH two seven nine er. Oh, they set a different ground. Uh, ground on one thirty two fifty five.
All right, well, this should work. Phoenix Ground, KH 279er, request taxi to parking. I feel like if I contacted them on the right frequency, I wouldn't have had so many turns. But by the time I picked the ground frequency, I couldn't find a way to go back and pick a different frequency from that menu. Alright, so let's look to the left and see where we're headed. Actually, where are we headed? Are we headed to the right? All right, I think the arrow's pointing right towards us, to our right, so let's... Rudder hard right, and... Tap on the right brake to kind of pivot around. All right, I think we're in a good spot. And let's taxi. The trees look very detailed, the mountains look beautiful. I see infrastructure. Like, you know, um, power poles and things. There's a tower. I don't know if that's one of those generic towers or if they've hand built this airport. I suspect it's generic. Okay, it's supposed to keep it under 20 knots while on all taxi. Try to do that. All right, so another turn. It's really handy to use the brakes in addition to the rudder to slow down the steer in situations like this. Just the coordination is a little tricky at first because the two moves are a little backwards from each other. In other words, you're pushing hard with the left foot to steer the rudder while pushing forward with the right foot to activate the brake. And so that just gets a little tricky. You need to slow down. Okay, let's do another pivot. planes taking off in the background. It looks like a flying truck, but... Oh, those are flying trucks. I wonder why there are flying trucks. I think the game thinks there must be a freeway there. Probably there is, and the, some of the data is mismatched or something in time. That's really funny. Oh, plane's moving, okay. Uh, all right, let me reset the view. Let's get ourselves parked. Another kind of a pivot here. Um, but yeah, flying cars, that's interesting. Would not have expected to see that. Okay, the game froze. That seems to happen sometimes. I'm not really sure why. Maybe to download or something. Usually it only takes a couple of taps or so on the Windows button to get it to come back. Alright, so using the left brake to steer and slow down. A little bit more thrust. Uh, a little bit more. I just don't want to run over the guy with the flashlights. Perfect. All right, let's set the parking brake. Shut the engine down. So this is Phoenix Sky Harbor. I was here once for an hour between flights. Turn off the plane.
And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. I will see you in the next video.